<laughs> Other than that, some of them are quite obvious, so you should be able to start with the obvious ones. I was going to say that the back one should be quite obvious. So that's that's not, well right, done, so yeah. we can put them out of the way. Right. So you're well done. Crystals? Well, nothing else is a crystal, is yeah. it? That's got to be on. Yeah, all that can be in there. So you've got a few left. That is a narrow down. Some of them are quite strong, some of them less so. Like it smells like chlorine. It smells like chlorine. Right. Alright, so. Okay. Depends, what do you think would be chlorine? What's the closest thing here? It reminds you of chlorine. We don't. Especially if the... Sorry? Yeah? See if anything there reminds you of chlorine. Coming up with the skin Do you want to leave it for a minute and try something else? Yeah, try okay. Try the smell of that one. Open the lid and have a smell. And look at the colour of it as well. Do you not like it? I quite like the smell of that one. It's quite good. Now, what do you think that would be? Have you ever gone into hospital to have any surgery for broken liver? No. No? No. <laughs>
smell. It's probably a bit of Which leaves this one, doesn't it? So, no, it's quite unusual. It was discovered in 1917 by a surgeon called Dakin. Um, sodium hypochlorite is bleach, pure bleach. So none of your pine-scented, green-coloured, thickened kitchen sinks. Pure bleach. And you make it up very weak, weaker than this. And what sodium hypochlorite does, as Dakin speaking, is it stops deep infections. So if you had a deep wound, the wound itself is unlikely to kill you. But the infection and the bacteria that get into it may well. And when it's very deep inside a muscle or inside tissue, it's really hard to treat. So what you would do, you'd get like a tube and you would irrigate the wound with this stuff, constantly rushing it through, and it the, the um, sodium hypochlorite sloughs out, it takes out the dead and the diseased tissue and it leaves the living tissue alone. So if you have to have dental surgery today, it's exactly the same as they're using dental surgery. Wow. So there you go. That's um, Thank you very much. It was, so it was found out on a, a hospital train. The surgeon who had an inkling that it worked, he went to the sister in charge of the hospital train and he asked her to find a patient who was good for dying. Uh, yes, yeah, no hope. Exactly. <laughs> and she found a chap from the Warwickshire Regiment who had such a bad wound that, in her opinion, he was going to pass away. Yeah. And they treated him with this and saved his life. Wow. And it went on to save thousands of lives. It became a really standard, practical thing. Now, we talk about iodine, and iodine crystals. One of the big pillars in the First World War was not wounds or infections. Disease. Disease is a massive killer. Okay. So you'll know typhus, typhoid, all of these infectious diseases that spread like wildfire because the conditions were incredibly conducive to disease. You get one person who's sick, very cramped, crowded conditions, people are under the weather. So if you were working in a hospital, right, you would get a call or a telegram saying that a fever train was coming in. Um, and that meant that all of the infectious diseases had been crammed onto one train and they were all coming in at the same time. So you knew they were coming. What you do, you clean the ward completely, you strip all the beds, scrub everything down with your carbolic soap that we were talking about before. And then it's your job to disinfect the ward to get it ready for the next fever cases. So, there are a couple of ways you can do this. One of them is to burn mercury, which I'm not going to demonstrate. Um, uh, perchloride of mercury that you burn. Now, I don't think that's wildly safe to demonstrate in public. This is a bit better. So, we were talking about iodine as a germ killer, weren't we? So, these are iodine crystals. There's actually very many there. Let's, um, running out slightly. That's a bit better. So you, on, obviously on a, a much bigger scale than I'm about to demonstrate, clearly. So you set your iron crystals and then you can use them to create a gas that was supposed to be oh, disinfectant. Oh. Wow. So can you smell the, the scent coming off that? Yeah. Yeah. What that, did you use? What was the um, It's use? pure turpentine. Uh, it has to be real turpentine. Yeah, it's not to work. That, um, yeah, they probably made it in a fume cupboard and all sorts. <laughs> so, you know, um, okay with that. We did it in small amounts outside. Yeah. Um, but the gas was considered to be disinfectant. So you would seal the whole ward off and leave it for 12 hours and then open like all the windows and come back in. Too. Yeah, obviously in much bigger quantities yeah. than we've just demonstrated. What I don't know is whether it actually works. I think that was my next question. Because I cannot find any studies that tell you whether it was or wasn't efficient. I suspect that what worked was the thorough scrubbing with carbolic beforehand. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but there's something kind of but psychologically then, pleasing say, about... There's no reason not to use it. If you think it works, Why? it's not going to do yeah. any harm, yeah. is yeah. it? It does help oh. create this horrible black sludge that gets everywhere. I noticed it on your hands. Everywhere. Um, and over the table, over my overalls, so yeah. you're pretty much. Yeah. Yeah.